so I might have done a thing and got another project. Hopefully this will be a quick flip though. See the steering wheel. Yeah, we got a, hold on. Had to put it down for a second. There was a police man. But uh, we got a Viper. It's a Mercury Viper, which is a two-stroke oil-injected jet boat with like 140 horsepower. Um, so got a pretty screaming deal off Facebook Marketplace. Guy posted it for 19, and I met him right after work with 1,200 bucks, and it kind of worked in my favor because I wasn't going to pay any more than that and um, ended up, the battery was dead. Couldn't hear it crank over, win one for me. Then one of the seat cushions underneath it, the plywood was dry rotted. So win two for me. And then, um, what was the other thing? The fact that you can't really Google anything. So I was Googling Viper, not Mercury engine and we couldn't find any information on it when I did actually find it online earlier um, on JD Power website and it books out for 5300 bucks. So if I can get her to run, then might have made a little bit of extra cash there. We'll post it for sale as running with a carb rebuild. He said last time he used it, he took it out on the lake and um, then parked it for two years and when he tried to use it again, it wouldn't it wouldn't start go figure So we're gonna start with a service We're gonna clean the carburetors. We're going to replace the spark plugs and the fuel and It should run Then we're gonna sell that biatch All right So we're back at the house and we yeah, we got a little jet boat. So as I said in the previous clip, the uh, it's a couple days later. Um, had a lot of rain, some bad weather. Ended up going and getting a battery, new battery, and some spark plugs and carb cleaner for it. Uh, I kind of have a game plan um, for it. I'm going to unhook the carburetors, clean those out, and fill the float bowls up with carb cleaner while, and let them set for a day or so um, so it can break up any any anything that's in there um it's not locked up which is good because i hooked up a trickle charger and the battery's dead it wouldn't hold the charge but it did turn it over like really slowly a couple times um so yeah we pressure washed it and let's just do a quick walk around so this is a 1996 it says on the registration card Mercury Sierra Viper. Super, super clean for the year. Um, original trailer, original upholstery, sort of 90s splash. Really, really clean inside. You can see typically the two-stroke engines they have a bunch of two-stroke oil and stuff dumped down in there but I mean overall it is super clean for the year so what we're gonna do is I've taken off the little the little where is the hook right here and laid it all the way back so that I can access these spark plugs it's a three-cylinder so I'll change out those, oh, sorry, four cylinder. Four cylinder 3.0 two stroke. <laughs> I guess 3.0, that's what the NADA said. And it's 120 horsepower oil injected two stroke. So we'll clean, clean things up and swap out those spark plugs and get rid of the, maybe clean out this air box. Um, but overall, I mean, it is super clean still has the original decals had my father-in-law as you'll see in the next clip 
this board was rotted out so we peeled off the upholstery and had my father-in-law make a new one Smile, you're on YouTube. I'm on YouTube. <laughs> Me and my 16 subscribers. 16, you're up. And we'll go later and get some new push pins because it clips into the fiberglass with the push pins through these, through these little holes like this. Goes down in. And then you take your upholstery and some spray adhesive, put it on top of there, put the cushing down let it dry i'll flip it over and i'll coat the back side to seal it with the uh, adhesive and let that dry and then we'll flip it back over and staple the vinyl onto it which is in just as good a condition as that Check this out, weirdest spark plug I've ever seen. Get it to focus in, it's flat. I've never seen that before. Definitely doesn't look like the ones that I got, so I'm gonna have to take the ones I got back and see if they have anything similar to this or call the marina. Weird. This is what these look like. You can't see any of the white. There's some weird rust fragments on some of them. So those things have seen their seen better days. So that's probably a portion of what happened. So now we'll get the carburetors. took the air box off right there is those three screws on the outside of the carburetors upper and lower and when I was taking them apart I noticed that there were some pretty grody hoses look at this pull that off that's just nasty so what we're gonna do is we will spray some starter fluid in here to diagnose whether or not we have spark to the engine. If it fires up, then we know it's the carburetors that we need to clean out. So then we'll just proceed with taking the, these bolts off, dismounting it from the engine, and then we'll uh, pull the float bowls off and clean out all the jets. So let's try that out. I got some starter fluid and a helper and a helper. <laughs> hold on hold on when i tell you i want you to turn the key okay but not yet okay so starter fluid in the lower okay 
kind of hard to do that. And then the upper. Okay, now, Dad, you're so hard. now we're gonna try it. So, turn the key. There we go, that's our problem. Okay, thanks buddy, high five. I want to try out the new one. No pushing buttons, it doesn't work. We gotta fix it. So now we got to take off the carburetor and Dad, see if we can even find though? a rebuild kit. So Dad. we'll go ahead and do that. Dad. Okay, so we pulled the carbs off, rebuilt them. I haven't put the airbox back on, but I got a little sputter. So let's test it out. Pretty exciting. Now we, the only thing left is to test it out of the water. So we got the uh, boat ready to sell, which is exciting because I was running out of project money for that. <laughs> so um, yeah, cleaned the carburetors out and ended up fiddling with the throttle a little bit and all of a sudden it just wanted to fire up. So. Thankfully, we're able to do that and get it done. Now I've moved on to the seat. I'll show you what I got going on with that. So I have this to weight it down, but I put spray adhesive on the board that that Mike did and poked through those little tabs. The tabs poke into the fiberglass in the boat and it's just gonna, it'll dry on there. And then I will take that plastic and wrap it over the top of this and that's the vinyl for this seat put that over top of the plastic and then hit it with the staple gun just like we put the seat on that moto seat all the way around and then throw it in the boat um but yeah i think that'll that'll do it that'll be a wrap for today uh, tomorrow i'm gonna come out and i got some uh, pretty exciting here let's check this out check this out we got the new the shock back and I got it coated with uh, I got it painted black with Cerakote so we've got the shock and the shock bearings and the shock rebuild kit and the new spring so we should be able to put that thing together um, I just have to go and grab some some fluid, some fork fluid, and we'll put that thing back together tomorrow, hopefully. up a little issue there but on the front this is what you see 
and it's supposed to be permanent, so it fit back on pretty good. A couple little holes there from the old screws. And then somebody stored it with some tires on it, so I'm gonna hit it with some some wax. And uh, overall though, not too shabby. Shout out to Mike Gibbon for replicating that. I mean, if you look at it, it's, it's not sharp angles. I mean, it's flat on this side, angled on this side. So he did a really good job. But that's gonna be a wrap for this one. Uh, I just wanted to get the boat out of the way so we could flip it and make a little cash. Um, so yeah, we'll get back on that CR250. That green one's up really high.